Yeah, yeah, I know. A lot of people are sharing that feeling this morning, yeah. of course. But, you know, we're going to keep the season pushing. Right, mm -hmm. Brooke? Is this black and gold? <laughs> this is black and gold this morning. Uh, yeah, we'll go with it. It actually is. Didn't do that on purpose, but always a fan of the Saints, nonetheless. You're wearing the Tampa Bay color, a little bit closer <laughs> to it. That's this red. Is true. <laughs> this is true. Just a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Total coincidence. That's it. That's you it. You know, it's one of those games you watched and you felt great about and then weren't surprised by the ending. I hate to say that, but truly it was a good game at least. Mm -hmm. It was pretty competitive all the way through. So at least we did perform on television nationally, but fell short. Nonetheless, we're not falling too short this week in terms of at least severe weather concerns. Right now, it's very muggy out there. It's a lot warmer than it should be for the month of December. And your satellite and radar, of course, is brought to you by New Orleans Rose with our forecast first. So we do see a lot of activity in terms of showers up to our north, not so much across Louisiana. And as we continue into the day, you're going to be dealing with warmth across the board. So we make it to the upper 70s, close to 80 degrees, and those southerly winds are going to be in the single digits. But again, anytime you're pumping moisture off the Gulf Coast, it's going to feel really muggy outside. Our dew point values up there with our temperatures, that's always a sign in there right around 70 degrees. So that being said, we're starting out at a 70 degree mark. We'll climb towards 80 later on today. Definitely going to want the shorts and short sleeves or dresses and skirts as opposed to winter attire. Let's check on traffic. It's 502. And traffic is brought to you by Chip Forestall. So good morning. We are looking at MSY, which is nice and quiet right now. Green on the map across the board. And we continue to see a pretty comfortable scenario in the Mississippi Gulf Coast area, not to mention Slidell. If we do have any fog, it's a little bit closer to Mississippi's Gulf Coast. Otherwise, visibility right now, not too bad. We'll continue watching it through the morning, though. Could very much develop as we get closer to 8 a.m. 27 minutes for I-10 westbound at Oak Harbor to US-11 as usual. Right now, it's still early, so we'll keep you posted if any accidents do occur. But so far, so good. Be safe on the roads. Back to y'all. All right, Brooke, thanks so much. Well, this morning, a Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, I should say Sheriff Department motorcycle deputy is in the hospital recovering after being hit by a car. Investigators say it happened at the intersection of West Esplanade and Causeway Boulevard about 6.30 yesterday evening. The deputy was taken uh, in an escort when he was, he was taken part in an escort when he was struck. He suffered a severe leg injury. No other information has been released. Well, on the North Shore, a former priest who was found murdered in Covington last week was laid to rest. Hundreds attended visitation and funeral mass for Father Otis Young. WGN's Jordan Lippincott reports. Hundreds filled St. Peter Catholic Church on Monday to mourn the loss of Father Otis Young, who was murdered in Covington last week. Father Otis served as pastor of St. Peter Parish before retiring this past July. It's a very sad day, and it's a day of a great mourning. Archbishop Gregory Amon led the funeral mass. The archbishop says many people have asked him about the presence of Jesus when Father Otis died. Jesus was present when this was happening and he was crying and crying and crying and saying to the person stop stop but we have free will. The mass however also celebrated the life of Father Otis. Otis's fidelity to Christ and his church and the promises which he made at his ordination to the diaconate and to the priesthood were very easily observed in the manner of his life. Father Otis had suffered a stroke, but was determined to stay connected with the church, which he called home. One parishioner says she just saw Father Otis a couple of weeks ago during a church meeting. He was just so wonderful. He and Ruth Prath were both there, and he spoke, and he was just so inspirational to all of us. And even with all his illnesses, he just, he was just a wonderful man, a wonderful priest. He was a person that was giving and I don't think he ever had a bad bone in his body. He would do anything for anybody. So the funeral for the second victim, Ruth Pratt, will be Saturday at 11 a.m. Visitation will take place Friday night and Saturday morning. And the man accused of their murders is currently being held at Angola. 
And this morning, Mayor Cantrell is responding to New Orleans Councilman J.P. Morrell's demand for the resignation of NOPD Chief Sean Ferguson. During last Thursday's council meeting, Morrell claimed rank and file officers are more concerned about perceived favoritism within the department than they are about their paychecks. He claims new leadership could change that perception and also boost manpower. However, Mayor Cantrell disagrees. You know, I don't, I don't even, I didn't even hear that. I did pick it up somewhere, but you know what? I will continue to make sure that the leadership of the New Orleans Police Department is sound and that we continue to move this city in the right direction relative to public safety. We're on a great track and we'll continue to stay there. Mayor Cantrell appointed Ferguson as chief in 2019 and has stood by him despite criticism. Covering the New Orleans City Council, the Utilities Committee will consider an ordinance outlining new billing policies for sewerage and water board customers. The new rules would give customers the right to dispute their bill and prevent the sewerage and water board from sending bills in dispute to collections. Committee members will also hear a presentation from Entergy on its policies and procedures for non-payment shutoffs, which resumed last month. The meeting begins at 10 in the City Council Chamber. Well, New Orleans City leaders broke ground on a new sewage and water board power station to keep the pumps running. The station is being hailed as a significant step towards improving the city's drainage and drinking water by upgrading the power source. WGNO's LBJ has more. Groundbreaking of the West Power Complex. It's just so surreal to even just say that this morning. And we are so happy that all of you are here uh, joining us to celebrate this momentum, momentous occasion. Sewage and Water Board Executive Director Gassan Corban underlining what officials called a generational effort to build the infrastructure project that will transform how the city's water system is powered. The city's antiquated system of power delivery is finally set to be updated after countless residence trials with flooding and other issues in recent years. Even four years ago, 2018 May, seemed like we were having boil water advisories every week, several a week. Officials have long known that the solution was an independent power station for the agency, but getting there was an expensive, tall hill to climb, and several speakers touted partnerships necessary to get the station built. It's really a little bit of everybody. So the federal government has a little bit that's earmarked here. The state is actually responsible. You see all this land out here that'll be in your shot. All of that was cleared as a result of state money. And then a significant portion is from the city as well. The city through the capital program funded the frequency changers that will convert that power back and forth from 25 to 60 hertz. And then the city funded the part of the substation that's at 30 million. The project is slated to cost $300 million to update a system built over a century ago. The power station will be owned and operated by Entergy. For WGNO News, I'm LBJ. And part of the funding for the power station comes from the money the city receives from the hotel motel tax. Happening later today, Warren Easton Charter High School is holding a teacher fair, hoping to fill open positions. Interested candidates should bring two to five copies of their updated resumes. The fair is from 5 until 630 in the Arthur Hardy Auditorium on Canal Street. Also today, a COVID-19 time capsule will be sealed and dedicated at the Slidell Museum. The capsule will contain memos penned by elected officials, a collection of publications featuring sports, uh, stories about the pandemic, letters from students of Pope John Hope Paul High School, and more. The event is set for 2.30 at the Slidell Museum. After record-breaking early turnout, voters are now casting final ballots in Georgia's Senate runoff race. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the issues Georgia's top election official says are standing out with voters. And good morning, New Orleans. You're waking up today to a lot of humidity out there. It's warmer than normal for December. We'll tell you when finally you expect a cool down coming up.
request an absentee ballot for Saturday's congressional general election. You have until 430 today to request one online or at your local registrar voters office. For more information on what's on the ballot, head to GoVote.com. And today, Georgia voters will head to the polls to decide who will hold that final seat in the Senate. Democrats already hold a Senate majority, but both parties are calling Georgia a must win. ABC's Justin Finch is following the latest from Washington. Election day again in Georgia, now holding the nation's final Senate race. An extended campaign for incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger Herschel Walker after neither won 50 percent of the vote on Election Day, sending the race to a runoff. The stakes are high and the differences between me and my opponent are too wide for us to sleep. This is about turnout and and now that means that we got to get in the game. Georgia breaking records with more than 1.8 million voters casting early ballots. The state's top election officials sensing voters are not only energized, but also informed, aware that Georgia's open Senate seat could tip or balance the Senate power scale. I think people understand that 50-50 uh, versus 51-49 is probably a big deal. The Georgia Senate race also shattering spending records with reports Warnock's team spent close to $170 million, more than doubling Walker's roughly $60 million. Political parties spending even more and deploying super surrogates. Former President Trump holding a teller rally for Walker. President Biden touting Warnock's record in an Atlanta radio interview. All the things that Reverend Warnock has supported are things that the people of Georgia care a great deal about. For example, to not have the prescription drug costs go up, actually come down. Walker closing his campaign by painting Warnock as a rubber stamp for Biden while separating himself from Trump and instead siding with popular Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. And now it's all in the hands of voters. Early voting so far appears to advantage Democrats, but high turnout from Republicans today could cut into that lead. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Good morning and a happy Tuesday. We are that much closer to your weekend already thinking about it, but your temperatures at the point of Saturday and Sunday won't look a whole lot different. Right now we're waking up really humid outside in the upper 60s to 70 itself. And you've got that humidity in the 97th percentile range for December. We're in to the month by a good bit now, December 6th. And you do see the beach camera at is shaking a little bit here in the wind. That's because there's more there on the Bay St. Louis to past Christian side than we're dealing with here. Already seeing a little bit less visibility across the region in the last 30 minutes to an hour. So a little bit of a sign of what may come. Make sure if you do encounter any patchy fog, you're using your low beams. We'll see that five mile visibility through Homa as well. So over the last 24 hours, temperatures are up a good bit in the seven degree range in Bogalusa, about six in Slidell and Bell Chase. That's where you're dealing with the 70s already. A couple spots in the upper 60s, but not a whole lot. So hour by hour takes us into the next few. With a lot of clouds around today, we're really going to see a combination on clouds and sun. We've got these winds out of the south in the single digits, and that's just always a sign of moisture as it continues pumping off the Gulf Coast. So these 70s stick with us for a while, and then we'll go towards 80 degrees as we get into the 3, 4 o'clock time frame, which is always the hottest part of your day. Anywhere from about 78 to 80 itself north of the lake, and we'll see pretty similar conditions across south shore locations as well. So you can expect 77 to 78. Tomorrow morning, waking up in the 60s, so a little better off at that point than we are right now. A little bit cooler across both sides of the lake. We'll say mid-60s for most of our south shore locations. And here is your future cast. Not stopping it a whole lot because it looks pretty consistent. As we get into Wednesday, a few rain chances, but nothing widespread. Thursday, we'll see pretty similar conditions as well. A couple more scattered shower chances at that point. But look at the humidity. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So you watch it oscillate a bit as we head towards your weekend. But even at that point, if you've got festive plans, the uh, coats are not going to be necessary by any means because we see these muggy conditions around a while longer. So headed into Renaissance Festival for one of its final weekends, we're going to continue to see these 70s across the board. As we continue to look at your seven day, it's not too bad, but look, a lot of showers in there every now and then on and off and temperatures still in the 70s to 80s. So 
We'll finally start to see them drop off a little bit as we head into the latter part of your weekend, but still going to be dealing with warm conditions across the board without a doubt. Seth?
find out what they are proposing and the impact it will have on your wallet. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stefana Chainock. I'm Tamika Lee. I didn't see any of the game last night, but I woke up. Because I just thought we won. You yeah, know? You, you just assumed. Yeah, I just assumed we won. I, you know, why wouldn't we? Why, why wouldn't we win? <laughs> and then apparently the last three minutes or seconds. Not, not a W. No, sorry. Yeah, close, but not a W. But it's okay. Tulane is, you know, pulling through for all of Hey, Seth, way to go. Here. Tulane Roll is away. keeping it on track for mm -hmm. us. And we have the Pelicans, too, to look forward to. I mean, I'm yes. excited about that season on deck. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. I like that. I like that outlook for Free sure. Pels are really, it's no, Tuesday. it's true. The Pels are doing great, and Tulane yeah. is on is doing is they're great. So yeah. good job. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a reverse. We're used to the Saints instead, but this year is a little different. So we'll take it. Your forecast first brought to you by New Orleans Rose. Good morning. The time now is exactly 5:30, and we are waking up warm to say the least. So prepare accordingly. Getting dressed. Temperatures right at that 70 degree mark. We've seen them climb a little bit in the last hour and a half. Our beach camera Pro Ravage shaking a little bit here in the wind. And visibility at the moment is fine, but we are seeing those numbers come down a bit. Homa as well as New Orleans around five miles, and we see a lot more of that fog on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Something to keep in mind as you are getting out the door. Add a couple minutes if that's part of your drive. And remember, if you do encounter fog, your low beams will be best. You don't want to use the high beams because they reflect the light back at your vehicle in the fog. So in the last 24 hours, we've warmed up. We've got a gradual warming trend all week. We're going to be in the 70s each and every day, if not at that 80 degree mark. So something to keep in mind as you are preparing accordingly. A lot of festive occasions and therefore festive outfits necessary as we get into the weekend. Let's check on traffic. It's 531. Traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall and right now we'll start out once again closer to side out 27 minutes. So you might have a little bit of patchy fog to encounter, especially over water. If so, maintain caution on the roads. 23 minutes for the causeway as you're coming to the south shore and then we'll take you towards Gentilly. As you can see, a lot of green on the map. Same thing in Metairie. So at the moment, we really don't have a ton to discuss, but we'll keep you posted if any accidents do occur. Back to y'all. And the Lower Ninth Ward neighborhood, 17 blocks of road work is now complete and paid for by FEMA. The city replaced damaged underground water, sewer, and drainage lines near Martin Luther King High School. The 17 block, $7.4 million FEMA funded roadway project, again, in collaboration with the Sewage and Water Board, our joint infrastructure project. Listen, you just cannot deny uh, the results that we're seeing. They are real, and we're getting the job done in the city of New Orleans. Last week, the city council finalized the 2023 city budget, which includes millions of dollars in funding for more infrastructure projects. <laughs> and Tulane's stellar season continues as they now prepare for the Cotton Bowl against USC. The Green Wave are the AAC champions, and students say it's got them all saying roll wave. Debbie Gina. Hey, 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 hey. Coach Willie Fritz and.
It is January 2nd in Arlington, Texas. Tulane students will be on winter break, so you can expect a huge turnout of green and blue for the matchup. Well, a new survey from Louisiana Department of Child and Family Services employees highlights some issues within the agency. According to the survey, employees don't feel supported by their supervisors and they feel they aren't being paid enough as their workload increases. Recently, the head resigned of the department and the department has been accused of ignoring child welfare warnings while facing a staffing shortage. The agency has been criticized for the recent death of a Baton Rouge baby who died from fentanyl toxicity following multiple calls about the family's drug use. And Louisiana lawmakers are looking at how to balance the budget with a potential fiscal cliff looming. In 2023 uh, fiscal session, so many are pitching bills to alter the state tax code. All several taxes are set to expire, leaving a gap in the budget. There are several different ideas on how to change the tax code. Some say taxes on the wealthy and corporations need to be increased. Some have other ideas. I do think to continuously look for ways to lower corporate and personal income taxes, that is a responsible thing to do. You can't do it all in one chunk, but as the economy grows, you can do that. So I do think that is uh, worth looking at. And also, some of the exemptions and credits out there, it's always healthy to do a proper scrub on that, see what it is. We just have to see what is the right policy that other states are doing. The Louisiana Association of Business and Industry says the focus should be on how to grow the economy. Any changes made to the state tax code will ultimately impact the next governor's administration. Well, coming up, if you haven't updated your state IDs to federal security standards, you might have a little more time. To find out when the new deadline is.
All right, happening tonight, Galatoire's Restaurant and Foundation will hold their annual Christmas table auction on behalf of the New Orleans Jazz Museum and Shepherding Hope Foundation. There will be a live auction, beverages and hors d'oeuvres from executive chef Philip Lopez. The event begins at 630 <laughs> at Galatoire's Restaurant. This is a big deal. Bourbon. This the goes for... A lot of yeah, money these every tables year. go for thousands. Th I mean, you know, Brooke can tell you also. <laughs> I mean, t sometimes what ten thousand dollars at most or twenty six last yeah, year. Yeah, twenty six. You were there last year. I was there last year for mm -hmm. Mardi Gras. I will Man, not I'll be tell there you, tonight. Well, was, yeah, I, I'm, I'll start the bidding. You start the bidding at fifty dollars. Ooh, I was gonna go lower, but yeah, fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I won't be winning that table. All right. <laughs> Well, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has extended the deadline to get your real ID by yes. two years, staff. The new deadline is May 2025. So that means you have more time to get driver's licenses and identification cards that meet federal security standards established by the Real ID Act. So DHS officials say the extension is necessary to make up for agency backlogs caused by the COVID pandemic. All right, good morning and a happy Tuesday. The time now is 541 and we are waking up warm to say the least for the month of December. It's December 6, but you wouldn't know it's stepping outside. Temperatures in the 70s and so are dew point values close to the upper 60s. That's always a sign of a lot of moisture out there. You don't want your dew point and your temperature matching up this late into the calendar year. So our beach camera at Boca Village is nice and quiet, not seeing it shake a whole lot. The visibility at the moment is fine in most spots, but we're seeing it trend down some. So with five miles of visibility out there, you can absolutely see in front of you. Just make sure if you do encounter any patchy fog that you are using your low beams. They'll be best. Over the last 24 hours, we've seen our temperatures rise anywhere from about 6 to 7 degrees in most locations. We see that 4 or so degree increase in a couple of spots as well. So temperatures at the moment anywhere from about 68 to 72 as we continue into your hour by hour. Our forecast will warm up considerably and we've got these winds out of the south so that's always a sign of moisture pumping off the Gulf Coast. Anywhere from 70 to 74 and then we'll start to get into the mid if not upper 70s closer to 80s. So that's going to be the case for the next couple of days. It's definitely a warmer than normal week for the month of December. Morning lows tomorrow are a little bit more seasonal in the 60s. We'll see that on both sides of the lake with the mid 60s across South Shore locations. So here's your future cast. We stay nice and quiet as we head into the next few days in terms of rain chances. You'll have a couple scattered chances for some downpours, but most of this is going to be misty, if anything, like yesterday. So just a little bit of a less than ideal start to the month. We had the one day of cool, crisp air. That was December 1st. And since we've been warm and a little balmy outside. So you may have some fog on the windows this morning as you're starting out like I did. We continue with humidity around a while longer all the way through your weekend. Of course, a lot going on this weekend and we've got a lot of uh, very festive occasions. So you'll want to dress accordingly. Here is your seven day forecast. We're heading into the next few days with those 80s by Thursday, Friday, and then we'll drop into the mid 70s on Saturday and Sunday. So this is going to mean you've got seasonal weather. We do stay mostly dry, but also mostly humid. Stay with us and we'll continue to forecast for you after the break. But first, we're going to go to our tap chat. So stick around. Seth. All right, it's National Older Driver Safety Week. <laughs> what age should you stop driving? We're going to chat about it in today's Tat Chat.
right this week, we're talking about <laughs> National Older Driver Safety Awareness Week. It's a big topic. Let's just go ahead and jump ahead to our dad chat because we want to talk about, you know, there are older drivers out there on the road. And, you know, what age would you like to stop driving? You know, it's a personal preference. A lot of today. people don't. Today, today you'd like to stop driving like yourself. A, a driver to drive me around. <laughs> I also want my daughter to get her license and she's 14 because she can drive. Now, so that's when she turns so I want her to drive so that I can stop driving. That's where, I, that's where I'm at. Right there with you. I'm, I'm, I'm that of age at 43 where I want to <laughs> stop age. driving. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> the end of that story. I agree. Bully. Would love to be <sighs> chauffeured. Mm -hmm. Nothing would be better. So, yeah, if I well, could will just it. have an Uber that I didn't have to pay for, you know? Yeah. I think that's called a husband, right? Oh, that's what I call Barry. That's a whole story. <laughs> I call him my Uber Black for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's what he is. But no, uh, seriously, like I, I um, yeah. Right. I feel like as long as you're able to get out and about, you keep driving yeah. down that highway. Yeah. That's the ultimate opportunity for freedom to me is my vehicle and the chance to get away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And let's get rid of the saying you drive like a grandma. You oh. drive like a grandpa. Hey. I drive like a grandma. Safely. That is safely. Driving safe. I drive like like that that's me i am I, I i i am so slow on the interstate it's people go around me and honk they're looking at me i'm like yeah that's me i'm just you know yeah and driving. this is just a quick reminder turn signals are not optional Ooh. um yeah i just want to put that out there I'm and please use honest, your turn signals if i'm ever running behind i usually say sorry i was stuck behind a buick or a cadillac which is probably Aww. now that i think about it not the kindest thing <laughs> be but nice be nice to everyone out there when i know you a lot of 20 year olds with buicks brooke <laughs> Do you know 20 year olds with Buicks? Yep. Oh. Some really old Buicks, too. Really? Because oh, like, you can ding them up, you know? It's yeah. like that. Like, it's like know, the older car. Cool. Yeah. Less responsibility. Okay. All right, everyone, drive safe out there this morning. We'll, <laughs> we'll be, be right back. In today's Tech Bytes, get ready to pay more to enjoy Xbox. Microsoft is raising the price on first party games. Starting in January, full price games like Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport will cost $10 more, rising to $70. The Department of Homeland Security has pushed back the Real ID rollout again. Enforcement will not take place until spring of 2025. The act calling for real ID forms of identification following 9-11 created in 2005. It was supposed to go into effect in 2008. Google Photos is testing a new feature that lets you quickly find people by their face in your Google Photos library. The new search feature combines facial recognition with traditional Google Lens features that identifies things like clothing and plants. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day.
We want to remind you, WGNO is looking for remarkable women across the New Orleans area. Now's your chance to nominate one. We're looking for women who do good work in the community and inspire other women. We're taking nominations until December 17th at WGNO.com. And we'll be highlighting some of the nominees for March for Women's History Month. Good morning and a happy Tuesday. This time now is 5.54 and you are waking up much warmer than normal for the month. We continue with temperatures in the upper 70s, close to 80s over the next couple of days. So rain chances with us on and off. They'll be scattered at best. We'll have a few of those scattered showers moving through, but most people stay dry, much like yesterday. We continue with partly cloudy skies all the way into your weekend. At that point, temperatures up a little bit in the 80s. We'll see the mid 70s by Saturday, so that'll actually be a pretty nice afternoon. Afternoon. And then on Sunday, we're a little bit cooler in the lower 70s with those shower chances back. So Monday stays nice and cool as well. We'll continue with 60s otherwise overnight. Overall, pretty consistent pattern. It's going to be warm as we head into next week, but we do cool down at that point. So something to look forward to if you're a fan of more seasonal trends. Let's check on traffic. It's 555 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. So we're starting out here in Metairie with no issues as you once again, head into the 6 o'clock hour, we'll start to watch traffic ramp up a bit across the city. Near the dome right now, coming off of last night's loss, we are quiet, just green on the map. And over to the West Bank, you're seeing the same thing over the Crescent City Connection. So we should have another pretty sunrise today. A couple more clouds out there, won't be as vibrant, but nonetheless, a nice way to start as you're getting out the door. Likely some fog on the windows, you may see a little bit of fog in spots as well probably closer to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It's something to keep in mind. If you do encounter it, make sure you've got the low beams. We'll see you after the break. Stay with us on Good Morning New Orleans.